Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Chris from My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop and today we are gonna be doing that adorable lemonade glass block found in the June mini quilt. Wow, <laughs> I think this is one of the cutest things I've ever seen. In fact, I'd like to put it on just about everything. I mean, who doesn't want to have a sparkling glass of lemonade, you know, shimmering in the sun with the glittery lemons and the blue polka dots? Okay, I know I'm being a little dramatic, but I can't help but just get so excited about this block. Now it's done in two hoopings because part A, we have to create this adorable little flag which says squeeze the day. And that's just done in a four by four hoop. Very simple, very straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and do that right now. And then afterwards we'll come back and we'll together go through the rest of the block. Shall we do that? Let's go ahead and get started. Now this block is very, very simple. We're doing the squeeze the day little flag that sticks out of the lemonade glass. And all you have to do is go ahead and hoop your wash away stabilizer into a four by four hoop size. Okay, so not very big. And I've done that here. And before I load it into the machine, let's go ahead and pull up the design, shall we? KD5130 four by four is the design that we are looking for. And I'll go ahead and hit set and embroidery. Okay, there we go. So with my stabilizer in here, I'm just going to slide this hoop into the machine and stitch the placement line of where to place my white leather. Now I'm going to take my leather and with the right side facing up, I'll just go ahead and place it centered over the placement line and begin stitching. If you wanted to, you could use a little bit of paper tape right here just to hold it in place. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put my hand there for a moment and then move it away. At this point, there's no need to actually trim this quite yet because we're gonna go ahead and stitch out the lettering for squeeze the day and then we'll trim up afterwards. Our first part is all done. Isn't that the cutest font? I love that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the hoop and take it over to my cutting station. I'm gonna grab my Kimberbell scissors here. And the goal here is to cut just on the inside of these stitch lines. So this is why it really doesn't matter what color thread you use in that first part because it's going to be trimmed up but it's nice to use definitely a contrasting color so that it's really easy to be able to see. And there we go. This one is ready to be put into my Part B project. And I'm just going to go ahead and set that aside. Now, remember, this does have wash away stabilizer on it. So what I want you to do is go ahead and uh, Perhaps just dip this in a little bit of bowl of water and it's going to remove. In fact, I would actually just trim as close as you can to this, those stitch lines just so you don't have a lot of goop. There we go. And then the rest will just be washed away. It takes about 20 seconds and then just allow it to dry. Now we're ready to move on to part B of this block and that is now filling that glass with lemonade. Let's take a look at our instructions found on page 15. As you can see here, we are at part B and it is going to have us load the eight by 12 lemonade file into the machine, which I'll do here in just a moment. However, before we do that, let's take a look at some of the fabrics and some of the embellishments that we're going to be using on this block. First of all, you've got this adorable blue polka dot background. Make sure you have some fusible uh, backing already fused onto the back of that. That's gonna help prevent puckering. You also have the blue fabric for your glass. And I want you to pay close attention to the fact that we have lots of yellow fabric going on here. And it has also been uh, fused with fusible backing on the back, just as it has asked us to do in the instructions, okay? We also have some greenery for the lemons and we're going to be playing 
with glitter applique sheets right here. Now, in preparation for using glitter applique sheets, one of the first things I'd like you to do is to very carefully remove this little plastic topping that you see here, all right? Uh, you definitely don't want to have this plastic topping underneath the needle. It can wreak all kinds of havoc. You're not going to be a happy camper. <laughs> Ask me how I know, right? Uh, so just be sure that you've removed it beforehand, and it's going to reveal this beautiful glitter applique that the best news of all is it doesn't get all over your hands or your floor, right? Okay, so I removed that. And I have a second one that I'm also going to do the same thing on. Just, I like to do it right from the beginning so I don't forget. And then also we'll be using this uh, clear vinyl on here as well for the glass. You'll also want to pull out your little white seed beads. That's the little ice cubes in this uh, lemonade glass. And so you can see that there's a lot of fun things happening with this block, isn't there? I mean, we're doing all kinds of techniques and this is just a super fun one. Let's go ahead and begin right here at the machine. And I'm going to go ahead and get out of where I just was and pull up my USB stick and find my design. And the one I'm looking for is KDQ 252 6 by 12 fruit. Beautiful. Oh, I love that. And I'm going to hit set. At this point, it's time to bring on the applique. So I'll hit add, go to my USB stick again, and let's find it. It's right here, KD51308x12. And I'll hit set. Now it's important to note that if you do not have this size of hoop that you can uh, play with, then the nice thing is, is that Kimberbell has made it possible to do the smaller size hoop as a five by seven with this block, but it's two hoopings. I want you to make sure that you refer to the special instructions that are found on your CD for being able to do multi-hooping with a five by seven hoop. And if you have never done this before, what I'd like to encourage you to do is go back to some of our past videos that you can see linked here and that's gonna help take you to understand the process of how to do multi-hooping with a smaller hoop size. It really is very, very simple, and Kimberbell has made it so accessible for everyone who wants to do these blocks to be able to do so. I've hooped light mesh cutaway inside my nine and a half by 14 inch hoop, and I'll just go ahead and slide that in and get ready to stitch out the placement line. The next stitch is going to be the placement line for my background fabric. You'll also notice that it goes a quarter inch outside of the batting line, and that's important because that way we make sure that when the pieces come together that uh, we don't have batting in our seam allowances. Go ahead and place our background fabric over top. As you can see here on the machine, it's now time to do that beautiful background quilting. In the instructions, it does give you some suggestions on what color thread you could use. And I've decided to go ahead and switch my thread color out to be a light pale yellow. I like the subtlety of having it be lighter rather than darker. However, it's such a cute design that I definitely want to see at least a little bit of it. So that's what I've chosen to do. But go ahead and choose a thread color that suits you best. Now that the background quilting has been done, it's time to stitch out the placement line for our lemonade glass. Our next stitch is going to be the placement stitch of where to place the cute little flag that we stitched out in part A. The instructions tell us to place the left-hand side of our little banner right alongside 
of that placement outline. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm also going to use a little bit of paper tape just to hold it in place. Take it back to the machine and it's going to stitch this down. Now that this has been stitched down, we're now ready to stitch out the filled stitches of the straw. And on this particular one, Kimberbell is using two different colors of pink thread, a darker and a lighter. So go ahead and choose whichever color of thread that you would like for your straw. And let's just see the magic happen at the machine. The next stitch out is to do the placement lines for where to place our lemons. Now, this a couple things are going to happen here. First of all, the placement is going to stitch out. We're going to know where to place our yellow fabric. And then we'll go ahead, we'll trim it just like a normal applique. The next step will then be that it will stitch out a placement line for where to place our glitter over top of that. All right, so Follow with me step by step and we'll be able to have these lemons done in no time at all. If you'll please join me on page 16, let's take a look at what it asks us to do next. It tells us that we're going to place two wash away topping pieces over the lemon segment glitter pieces and to tape in place. Then we're going to stitch out the lemon membrane fills and then remove the tape, tear away the excess topping, and then stitch the outlines on the rest of the lemon peel details. So we're going to switch with white thread and then we're going to go to yellow thread. But before we do that, let's take a look. This is the wash away topping. Two layers it is, folks. And I'm going to definitely tape this in place because it can get a little squirrely under the needle there. We don't want that to slip away. So I've done it there and I'll repeat the same thing over here. Little tape here and there. Okay. There we go. All right, so let's head back to the machine and I'm going to change out for white thread. Now I'm just going to remove the tape as well as the water soluble topping. And it just peels right off, so it's really easy. And I'll finish it off by changing my thread color out to yellow again, and it will finish with the satin and decorative stitches on these lemons. At this point, you could remove the topping from the insides as well, or you could just save it for later to um, dampen with a wet cloth and have those be removed that way. So either way will work. Our next stitch out is to show the placement line of where to place my lemonade fabric. Place it over, stitch it out, and then trim it out. With yellow still being the thread color of choice, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this out, it is going to be a decorative stitch around the lemonade. All right, so I have a couple more lemons to stitch out. And I'm actually, I'm going to switch out for a little bit darker yellow. Just again, it's just a personal preference just to add a little bit of dimension here. And it'll stitch out the placement line, the tack down stitches, uh, trim it out, and then finish with some of the decorative stitches. So just like a normal applique. Let's 
switch out thread colors and I'm going to now stitch the satin stitch at the glass and I'm switching it out for the color green. At this point, we're going to take our clear vinyl and just place it right over top of the glass. And with the same thread color, we'll just go ahead and stitch this down. Remove the hoop from the machine and it's time to trim up the vinyl excess. Now when we trim, it's important to note that we're going to trim just along the side edges and along the bottom. Make sure and keep the top open for now. Place my hoop back into the machine and it's going to stitch out the satin stitch for my lemon. We now need to add a little bit of shine to these lemons. And so I'm going to switch my thread color out for white. It's time to now stitch out those leaves. And for this, I'm going to change my thread color to green. And again, it's going to follow the same applique steps as far as placement, tack down, trim out, and then do the decorative stitch around it. This next stitch are just a little chevrons around, kind of scattered around the block. Uh, it suggests that we use green. I'm going to keep with green, but really use any color you choose. Change out the thread color once more to white to add a little bit of shine on that bottom lemon. It's the moment we've all been waiting for adding these cute little seed beads for our ice cubes. So remember, we left the top open and we didn't trim it up. If you trimmed it up, it's not gonna be the end of the world, I promise. You can get it in there. But the goal here, and you're gonna have to do this very carefully, we're gonna kind of shimmy and shake this hoop here so that the beads are at least a half inch beyond there. It's going to stitch out. Let's see, I'm gonna grab, mm, I'm just gonna grab my little scissors here just to kind of help push those down a little bit more. Okay, they'll eventually fall to the bottom. But there we go. So I wanna make sure that my thread color is back to green or whatever color you had used for your glass because it's going to now do the tack down stitch holding the top in place and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim along the top after that's been stitched down, okay? All right, I think I can go ahead and just leave this in, the, in my hoop and I'll be able to just grab my scissors and just trim along the top. If it's easier to do it after it's removed from the hoop, that's fine too. It's not going to get in the way of anything. You can do a little trimming. Um, afterwards as well because I have a little piece there didn't quite go as well as I wanted to with these scissors so and at the angle I was at so I might just do a little trim afterwards but we're just about done my friends let's uh, finish this off with changing out one last thread change and I am changing to that pretty pink that I had earlier for the straw it's going to do a few more sets of little chevrons in the background, and then it will all be done. It actually shows on the screen that there's one more stitch out, but as outlined in the book, it says, do not stitch this line out. And it was for per, uh, placement purposes only when digitizing. So no need to stitch it out. If you do by accident, not a big deal, it can be pulled out, 
but this really essentially is the very last step that you need to do on this block. And with that, our block is done. Oh my goodness, is this not the most adorable summertime block you've ever seen? I absolutely am in love. And do I dare say this was easy peasy lemon squeezy? Did I say that? I think so. <laughs> I think I did. Yes, my friends, this really was a lot of fun. Wasn't too difficult. Time consuming? Yes. But you know what Kimberbell says? Who cares how long Q takes? So this one is a cute one and it was worth all the effort put into it. So that is how this block is done. Go ahead and follow the trimming guidelines as outlined in your instructions and you'll have it done in no time at all. And then with that, this block is going to go with this block, which is gonna go with this one and which is gonna go with this one. And together these are going to be making an absolutely adorable little mini quilt to have up all summer long. I mean, who says you just have to have it in June? I think it's so, so fun. All right, let's see your pictures. I wanna see your progress. I wanna see your finished projects. Uh, post them on social media. Make sure to tag us at hashtag my girlfriend's quilt shop. Don't forget shop has two P's and an E, S-H-O-P-P-E in it. And uh, be sure to tag Kimberbell as well. So hashtag Kimberbell or hashtag Kimberbell Designs, either way will work. But that allows us to be able to see what you're doing. And again, of course, if you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to reach out. Hey, I hope you're enjoying these mini quilts as much as I have been enjoying making them and teaching them. It really is, you know, they're a lot of fun. They're fairly quick projects and they make an adorable addition to our homes. And they also make great gifts to give. So think about that. Think about how you might want to gift this to someone. Maybe give them a series of, of little mini quilts to have in their home. Kind of a, a fun idea. All right. You know the drill. If you have enjoyed this video, we would be so grateful if you would give it a thumbs up. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you're the first to know of any new videos that are posted. We love doing them and we hope you enjoy learning from them. Until next time, happy stitching, keep doing all the things that you love and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.